you know, uh, one of the greatest performances I've ever ever saw. It might, it might be the greatest performance I've ever seen to date. Uh, and uh, it was a total fluke that I was there, but I, I had the opportunity to see Judy Garland at the Palace Theater when I was 14 years old. It was August 22nd, 1967. Did not want to go. I mean, Judy Garland to me was the girl that was in The Wizard of Oz, you know. And a great singer and all that stuff, but you know, I was 14 and I didn't want to go see Judy Garland. But my brothers and I went anyway. It was probably uh, one of the top three performances I've ever seen in my life. And literally taught me. I, I learned more from that performance than I did from seeing anybody else. Learned what? Judy Garland, and by the way, I'm straight, just so you know. Just, just yeah, I know, know that. Well, you mentioned Judy Garland, all of a sudden it's, hey, wow! <laughs> but that's not, uh, I, I think what, what I learned from that was her incredible ability to control and command without you knowing it, the audience. Because I was part of that audience. As soon as she, if the spotlight hit her, until she left the stage. I've never seen any performance, including the Beatles, including Elvis Presley. The only other performer that came that close was Frank Sinatra, because he was, come on, Frank Sinatra, for Christ's sake. I mean, I saw him three or four times. It was the first date I took my, well, she wasn't my wife then, but the first date I ever took Vinny on was to see Frank Sinatra. Uh, we were in London and he happened to be performing there but the first time I ever saw him was at Caesar's Palace and it was one of the things that I, you realize how big of a star or of a celebrity or of an icon he was no ladies and gentlemen Frank Sinatra no nothing like that the band started playing da 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 and there, everybody's clapping and da da he wakes and he walks out cigarette in hand just as Cool. Uh, come on, Frank Sinatra. Band's playing, everybody's clapping. He bends down, points to somebody, takes it, picks up their Jack Daniels, takes a shot of it, gives it back to him, and then starts singing Ladies of Tramp. Forget about it. <laughs> it was like, I, I, I was at my jaw, I was like, oh, like that. And there he was, Frank Sinatra. I mean, that was just like amazing. It's the control and the command that they have. Judy Garland just, and she did it without you knowing it. She totally manipulated you as an audience member. And she did it by being who she, she, she was exactly who you wanted her to be. And my brothers and I, without knowing it, I mean, we did some bad shows. Everybody does bad shows. You can't help it. It's just, you know, it's the nature of working 225 days a year. Some of them are going to suck. But what I think we always gave, an, gave our audience was the truth. Always. Even when we sucked. We knew we sucked. We told them we sucked. And they actually forgave us being bad. Um, but we, we, were, we were honest. And so was Judy Garland. And so was Frank Sinatra. And so were the Beatles. I'm not that I'm comparing us, because other performers who are equally as, as honest as, as performing as well. I mean, you, uh, if, if you ever saw Led Zeppelin or Jimi Hendrix or any of those bands like that, or I went to see Blink-182 a couple of years ago when they were together with my daughter, and they were great. They were fun, their music was great, they were funny, and they were honest. Those guys were exactly, I can tell you right now, backstage in their car at home, that's what they are, honest performers. So I'm not saying, I'm not by any means comparing us to those greats, but I learned a lot by seeing them. I learned that you got to tell the truth, even in a performance.